Alright, first thing I like to do is put witness marks on it, so I can put it back together the same way the customer sent it to me. Are we ready? Yeah. Alright, Take the cover off. Sometimes your cover won't come off because it's already had oil in it. The hammer and punch, the hammer and chisel will do you a lot of good. Take your O-ring back off. Uh, from here, I like to start looking at things. Uh, you're going to look for wear marks on the thrust washer here. Make sure if, if there's a lot of wear on it, see if you've got thrusting one way or the other. So, that's one of the things, one of the first things you want to look at. Make sure you ain't got thrust in there. You're going to look at your input gear. See how worn it is. Look down in the grooves, down at your uh, line of action. Make sure that it's not pitted or getting smoky in color. Same with your carriers. You want to look at your teeth on here. See how they look. Make sure you ain't got no missing, no chip, no rope. You got another thrust washer between your primary and your secondary. Look at that. Look for the same thing. Just thrust issues. Sun gear. Same thing. You want to look for anything out of the Alright, take your ring gear off, secondary carrier, yeah you just want to spin them, make sure you don't hear nothing, make sure it doesn't take or you know it should spin and then slow down on its own all the way around, you'll be able to tell if the bearing's bad because it won't move usually. Do that on your primary and your secondary. Your O-ring on your 50 units, you will have to replace your O-rings when you tear it apart. You should replace your O-rings and if you press off the seal, you got to replace the seal also. The best thing I've found so far for a 50 unit to tear these apart is what they call a heel bar. You just stick it under there. And then you start hitting at it. Take your split rings out. You should have a couple shims in here. That all depends on how tight the load is, how loose the load is. That's how we control the load is with our shims. So a lot of times if it's a real light application, we won't have any shims in there. Uh, your loading locks. We'll only go in one way. They have a uh, little ridge down here at the bottom that you can feel, which will made up into here, into the bottom of this, and that's what locks it down. Now I've seen these come back with these little things broke, but this is still in here, so that shaft won't come out. I've never seen a shaft come out with this in there. So. You take your lock and load out, press it out. You want to make sure you got something underneath the shaft to keep it from falling and getting damaged. a couple times, make sure there's no chunks in it. Uh, you also want to look at your very top.
bearing cups in here. You want to look at them, make sure they're not burned. This is when you get like a side load. It'll actually bend your cups in here. It'll bend these cups in. Uh, you want to wipe it off. You can also see if it's wearing on one side more than the other. It's usually a side load. Take your bearing forward. And when you're pulling this off, you, gotta, you want to try to get underneath the race and not on the cage. So if you do, you'll bend the cage up and then the bearings crash. So you want to be on this part right here and not out here. Yeah. seal there's a parting line right here on the back side you won't see that let me zoom in real quick back on that parting line you see it right here and that goes toward that goes into the gearbox okay your seal lip here is thicker than the dust boot that's on the back okay. the dust boot will always go out if you peel back this lip a little bit, there's a spring down in there. Am I moving it too much, no, Brad? That's perfect. There's a little spring down in there. The spring will always go inside the gearbox. Okay. Sweet. Okay. Sweet. back in. Again, when you're pressing your bearings back in, you want to press on the inner race. Oh, yeah. Okay, you want to press on the inside instead of this cage on the outside. All it'll do when you press on the cage is bend it and all your rollers will fall out. You want to whip out your seal journal. Make sure there's nothing left in there. I will use a solution 34. It's just a sealant for the seal. Okay, 
Okay, so what you're going to do is just run a bead around it. Wipe it down with your finger so you got a good even coat all the way around. Put it out of tan. Insert her down in here. Hold one side down with your thumb and tap the other side if you can. And you, all you're trying to do is just get that started. going in there. You just want to try to tap it in as even as you can. And you want to tap on the edge of the seal. Now in some instances we've got press tools for that over at the when we're installing them at the factory. Right. But everybody may not have that, so they just... just well, this is perfect that way. Yeah. I like to use a bolt. I only put about half of the bolt head on the seal. The other half will come down here so you know when you're flush. And you can tap it all the way around. And make sure you're good and flush in there. Stand it back up. Now, same with this bearing here, you only want to press on the inside, not the outside. Get it started, release your pressure, and start again. And you want to kind of give it a spin. You know, a lot of this, right now anyhow, is by feel. You know, make sure it's decently tight, but you don't want to crazy cut. What I like to do is I like to put two shims in there to start with. You put them down in there. Take your locking loads. Like I say, they only fit one way. You're going to slide it in. Now this one here, you can see that it's, you still got a bit of a gap here, so they're not going to come together all the way. That means you got too many shims in there right now. So you got this big gap here, yeah, let's see. and you got a gap over here too, so. So too many shims? Yep, too many shims. So we'll take one out. And when I put these together, I like to have, when you have that gap in there, I try to have about the same amount on each side. I mean, it's more of a look thing than anything else. You take your lock ring, set it down on side. I always like to feel the top, make sure everything's setting down flush. If it's not, just take the high side and tap it. And then everything will set flush in there. You're going to install your O-ring. And your secondary carrier. Then your ring gear. Now your ring gear for cover or for orientation doesn't really matter. There's really no orientation on the 50. If you 
Just line up your hole. You're going to reinstall your sun gear. See, hey, Jim, when you were on this line, you should have never had to stop. Then your secondary thrust rates. You're going to reinstall your primary. Reinstall your input gear. Primary thrust rates. You can put your O ring cover in. You can't put it on the ring gear because it, oh, yeah. it seals in the corner here and on the corner down here. Yeah. On the beveled edge. On the beveled edge? Yeah. Okay, up here on this beveled edge. So. So reinstall your cover. Make sure your witness marks line up. I put special ones on this side, so. Give everything a start. Now here, what I'll do is, I'll zip it down from my impact here. I'll leak test it, spin test it, and I'll take it over to Alicato and do a torque test on it. So it'll read, but we need the paperwork for all that. So for right now, you want to walk your cover down. You don't want to tighten one side and then tighten the other. That'll damage your O-ring even more. down on the side, put your input, your spin test tool in here. Now whenever you do a spin test on these, you want to go slow. Because if there is one of the gears are cut wrong or something crazy, and you go ahead and full bore and it catches, it's going to rip that gun out of your hand and it's going to hurt. So bring it in slow, spin test just a few revolutions around and what you're looking for is you know, anything making a funny noise, you're feeling for uh, tight spot. And when you hit a tight spot, it's done with dirt. I mean, you'll be able to feel it. Did you get that, Brad? Yeah. Basically, you want to just ease into it. basically our leak test gauge. This here, uh, it detects anything. So if your O-rings, they have a parting line in them. If you roll that parting line around there, this will detect that. Your air will walk right up through there and out. This will find it.